Welcome to Chris Barkin Shooting Sports. We're in Nuremberg for EWA 2023. Stick with us and let's see what's new. Here we've got some of the Thermtech uh, thermal imaging gear. We saw some of this at the British Shooting Show. I was very impressed because they actually have dual focal length lenses on them so you can actually do optical as well as digital magnification on both the scopes and the thermal images. The Pulsar merger was something I encountered here last year and it was very, very appealing. Pulsar gear is quite market leading, I have to admit. Um, I'll be interested to see what's uh, new when I get to the Pulsar stand. There's night vision and thermal imaging everywhere. Some of it is significantly more compact than others. Pocket sized. This is one of the most interesting products at the show. This is the PARD TD5 dual spectra thermal and night vision rifle scope. So we've got rangefinder 2, night vision on top, thermal to the tube. It's got 100 millimeters of eye relief because the architecture, the structure of it is very similar to the DS3550, DS3570, which I adore because of the easy user functionality and the fact it's got 100 millimeters of eye relief and you're not compromised in any way, shape or form with having a rubber eye bell on it. Now, they've changed the architecture a bit. The top's a little bit more bulky. It's got a slightly different strap here and it'll take the usual 18650 flat top batteries. Similar functionality in terms of the control buttons, the illumination system, the recording function, the range finder, the on off switch. And of course it's in the 30 millimeter tube, normal eye relief, so it's straight on your rifle. I think these have got to be the future now. I'll be getting one as soon as I can to do a full review for you guys. So please remember to like and subscribe, click the notification bell so I can see and you can see everything as soon as it appears. This is the PARD TS34 LRF, thermal rifle scope. Again, I'm repeating myself now, same architecture as the DS3550, DS3570, so it's got 100 millimeters of eye relief, similar control functionality, but this is the LRF, so as well as thermal, it's got a laser range finding capability too. Hard have got masses of gear at this show. And to go through it all, I'm going to have to refer to this chart on here because we've got the new 007 SP, which is the clip on rear end night vision imager to go with your regular rifle scope. There is also an LRF version of this, which will give you far more data if you need to use that for longer range shooting solutions. And there is also the AT34 LRF, which is in fact a front clip-on unit thermal imaging. And that has got a nice clamp assembly just there, which fits on the front of your regular rifle scope to give you thermal imaging capability. They just keep on arriving, don't they? For those of you who've seen my review on the PARD TA62 thermal imager, this is now the LRF laser range finding option. So there is a one, two, three, four, fifth the button on top for all the same functionality, but the fifth button now adds the laser range finding capability, which is coming from the bottom of the scope here for the laser emitter and receiving sensor. This is gonna be a really cool new addition to the PARD range. And again, it's got all the usual monocular functionality you saw in the video on the TA62, but now, one press on top and you've got immediate range to target which I have to say even on this indoor scenario with lots of awkward light solutions is very much instantaneous. This is the new PARD NV007SP LRF 
night vision add-on for the back of this scope. Now this has got the bayonet system, it fits on the back of the scope and gives you night vision capability through your regular daylight rifle scope. We've seen these around for the last few years and they're great, they're excellent, they've got better and better and better and they've made the actual fitting systems a lot more compact so you have less problem with eye relief issues without changing the scope on your rifle. The big difference with the new LRF version of this is the fact it has a laser rangefinder, so it will tell you your distance to target as well as giving you all the daylight nighttime capability we're used to from these. They have an onboard illuminator, but I would always say if you're going to shoot long distance, the bigger the illuminator you put on, the better the range they're capable of. I've done absolutely loads of foxing with a very economical Hick Micro Lynx 19, but I think I need to get my hands on one of these newer, larger Falcons because it has a larger 640 by 512 pixel detection sensor and it's also net D rating is at less than 20 millicolon, so it does give a much, much nicer picture. And the one thing I love about these Hick Micro is the fact they've got the totally ambidextrous left or right hand dexterity on them which makes them so easy and fast to use but going back to that Lynx it's so teeny tiny fits in your pocket carry it everywhere it's one of the reasons I've loved it nearly all the thermals I've ever used even though it's possibly the cheapest it's possibly the one I've used the most This is a Hick Micro Thunder 2 forward thermal imager. Now, as normal, forward goes on the front of your scope, allows you to see the thermal image through your rifle scope as normal. But it's available in different formats to suit your pocket and also your absolute resolution needs, from very low to high resolution sensors, which of course will be magnified because your scope is actually looking at the screen as it's projected. So it really matters that the actual image projection on that screen inside that clips on the front of your scope is as crisp as possible. And then of course when you take it off your rifle, you've got a normal thermal monocular. There's night vision and thermal imaging everywhere at the show. But I think it's important to possibly suggest looking at rifle scopes in thermal and night vision that they are becoming very much like optical rifle scopes in the fact they've all started to drift towards a similar format, similar functionality, similar features, but there are definitely some that work better than others. Looking at the ergonomics of some of the thermal spotters, some of them are significantly bigger than others, and they're not necessarily giving you any more features, functionality, or larger sensor with better resolution, etc. They're just going for a far larger, more hand-filling ergonomic size. Whether that's due to inherent packaging difficulties or a design choice, I haven't ascertained yet, but it is an interesting point because some of the smaller ones that just fit easily in your palm, although they don't necessarily offer, the ultimate resolution are so ergonomically usable because you just drop them in your pocket and they're always with you. And they say, you know, the camera that's with you is the one that gets used. This is the Pulsar Merger NXP50 Duo. Now this has got thermal and night vision capability. There's a button on top which allows me to swap between the two image capabilities. You can read all the specifications on the website, etc. What I'm going to tell you about is what I think because ergonomically, as we all know, I'm a big fan of ergonomics. This is exquisite. It's so close to a regular set of binoculars, it's untrue. You've got image focus, eyepiece focus. You've got lovely setup here to make sure you're shielding out extraneous light, etc. And I think it's also got interpupillary distance adjustment there. So it fits in on your face. And this one button on top allows you to flick between thermal or night, or die, uh, thermal or night vision imagery. And the image available is absolutely stunning. I would love to review one of these. Whether I can get my hands on some or not, I don't know. But I like the fact you've got nice lens caps, they hang down, they click solidly in place, they're on rubber tethers, and that is just, it's got to be the market leader in a binocular, biocular, thermal imaging, or night vision product like this, because it will sit on your chest just like regular binoculars. It's not some huge, big, clunky unit. I do like monoculars, but I do think that has got some 
serious ergonomic benefits to it. So have a look on the Pulsar website because I think what they're saying on there is quite probably very, very real. <laughs> this is the Firmtech Cyclops 3400. Now, I was told about this at the British Shooting Show the other week. They didn't have this facility there, but they've got it now, it's been released. So, on the rifle scope they had, they had an adjustable focal length. So, it, effectively, there are two focal length lenses in it. You can switch one to the other, which is akin to having an optical zoom function, not just digital zoom. And this is the spotter version now. So, essentially, as well as being able to focus the image as normal, you can swap between two focal length lenses to totally change the optical magnification, as well as digital magnification, which were more custom to on thermal spotters. You've also got this superb joystick control which controls colour palette, magnification and all the menu functions. These are going to be brought into the UK by Edgar Brothers and I've been very impressed with what I've seen so far because the ergonomics, the tactile nature of them and the battery life is also superb at 12 hours. So we can scroll through colour palettes and then we say pick white heart. We can zoom in optically, not just digitally. And then we refocus. You get used to doing this after a couple of times. So that's refocusing as we zoom down. Zoom back up. Refocus again. And that gives you optical rather than just digital zoom. I'm looking forward to hopefully getting one of these in for review, but of course we're in a hall with people bustling around everywhere. As I go from hall to hall to hall, there is thermal and night vision everywhere from brands we both have and haven't heard of. And I think what's going to separate some of the wheat from the chaff is whether they take on board some of the advice given from companies in the countries that they hope to market and sell these products to to see if they actually fit the need. But it's clearly obvious that the um, format and layout of many of them is quite formulaic is a nice word, direct copy is another, are they just actually the same product with a different logo on them. This is the latest Schmidt & Bender PM2. This is a 6 to 36 by 56. Now, it's not easy to film on the Schmidt & Bender stand because there's a massive window next to us just behind the camera there. But it does mean we've got a fantastic view into the distance. And after seeing so many optics and rifles and, and thermals and night vision inside the hall with very limited field of view, having something to look a thousand meters out that way or 300 meters out that way onto a building's gable end means you can test all the facilities on it, the illumination, the parallax control, windage, elevation adjustment, and of course this massive throw lever here, which is like a shark's fin, which makes it really quick to control. With the rifle on a tripod, I can get behind it, and it's one of the few scopes in this whole building where you can actually appreciate just how glorious the image quality is and really test it in a realistic position with proper eye leaf, proper stability, and actually look at objects in different light conditions from shadow to bright sunlight and assess how good the image quality is on this. And if you hold it really still and lock the tripod, of course, you can have a look at the tracking control as well, unlock the elevation turret, twist it backwards and forwards like this and see if it's coming back to exactly where it was before. I will be getting one of these on review because I personally really want to use one. The scope has got a locking turret there so you can lock it before you add or remove elevation. It's got three positions. I'm not sure what the middle one's for, but we shall investigate that and find out in the future. The reason it's tricky to video is because we've got the window and the scenery in the distance out there. 
This is a new scope from Loophole. It's a Mark 5 HD 2 to 10 by 30. It's quite compact, very pointable. And although it's pretty tactical, you could say, down at two power, it's actually not a bad scope for, uh, I wouldn't say fast driven game, but certainly for uh, ambling game or, you know, a, a compact hunting scope because it's got superb Mark 5 HD optics and the image is very, very nice through it. This one's also got a red dot sight main mounted on the side. This loophole probably epitomises my personal favourite scope for uh, driven game. This is a Patrol 6 HD 1 to 6 by 24. Now it's got a super fast throw lever on there, so you leave it down at one power for all your driven fast fire targets. But if anything does start to wander out of distance or you're given the chance to take on a target that's a little bit out of distance, you can just wind it straight up to six or anywhere in between and you can make that more precision shot. I've been on quite a few uh, driven shoots where you get a game that's just too far out of range for a fixed one power optic. These are some Loophole BX4 HD range binoculars. They are in the 10 to 42 or 10 by 42 specification. Um, uh, why I picked them up is because they've got some quite, you know me, I miss the ergonomics, but they've got some really nice features about them because they've got a fully sort of stippled casing on the rubberization on these and it makes them super, super grippy and easy to get hold of. They're also very compact and it's just literally one finger there, does all your focusing controls. You've got range finding functions on them too. And again, on the eyepieces, you've got nice firm detented positions for the actual position to suit your eye relief off those lenses and again there's nice segmented rubber here to make sure you've got easy grip on those to get your focus set up perfectly so it makes them very quick in use they're super compact and I love how assured and grippy they are in your hand because although most rubber armoured binoculars do have stippling into them it's nothing like as detailed as what's on here and because there's an neck strap attachment too but I am actually going to try and get hold of some of these and give them a review because they do look like they've got obviously a range finder inside but there's obviously some other, other electronics as well. One of the great things about Ewa is you've got massive, massive glass windows in some of the halls. So if you've got an optical product like this spotting scope, you can view out hundreds of meters into the distance. This is a Loophole spotting scope. I don't really know much about it. It's a Loophole SX4 Pro Guide HD 20 to 60 by 85 millimeter spotting scope. So just having a look at it, we've got an extending sunshade there. We've got similar heavy textures on here, so you've got a good grip on it. I do like a central focusing dial there because it's close to your actual tripod support. So you don't tend to transfer as much vibration into the scope when you're doing it. And of course, because it's very large and very light, you're not actually having to grip anything which can disturb the aim of the scope, which when you're shooting a long distance is critical because you've often taken a lot of time to precisely aim it onto the target you don't want to lose. And at the back here, we've got the adjustable magnification and eye relief set up there to get the eye cut perfect for you. But this is an interesting spotting scope. It seems to have everything I like about a spotting scope. Very easy functional controls, and that focus means you can get it exactly in crystal clear picture without any undue vibration being transferred through. I like this one. Looks like I missed that sign then, as did thousands of other people who were here. Masses of new products from Bushnell. We've got laser range finders, bone collector, laser range finders, binoculars, some trophy binoculars. These are quite a cool little roof prism unit, very small, compact, probably lightweight. They are lightweight. I don't think those are going to be too expensive, so there may be another good option. This is the Match Pro rifle scope. So if I show you that. I saw one of these not so long ago, but this has got really nice turrets on it. Lift to turn turrets, lock in position, they've got zero stop them. Nice, accurate dials, you've got good, firm clicks, you can easily feel the detents. Obviously parallax adjustable, illumination control, right side windage, and it's got a throw lever, which you can't really do without on a throw lever these days, can you? This is a five to 30 by 56 unit, so you've obviously got massive magnification range on that. 
This would appear to be a carbon fiber finish for grip on the broadhead laser range finders. More binoculars, and then we've got the vault system. These are so popular now. Actually, I don't have one, and I maybe need to procure them somewhere. And the vault system, obviously, is for keeping your binoculars safe and secure, easily accessed on your chest. Night vision equipment. This new Bushnell vault system is nice. It's got a magnetic top on it. So you basically just grab the lanyard there, pop it open, and it lifts off the top. Binoculars come out. It's obviously a little bit tricky because it's not attached to me, and I'm one hand on the camera, one hand on these, but that is all soft, lined. We've got a little tiny accessory pouch at the top, and it's all adjustable, and it just pops back down to seal everything in. 